Folks, welcome back to the show where sometimes we break up potato chips and slide them under the door. Of course, we're talking about train wreck rules. I'm Maniac, my co-host, Aaron Quinn. Quinster, welcome back. Uh, it felt like a long week, but we got more Vanderpump at last. We got some live Valley now. There's mixed opinions on that. But speaking of opinions, what was your opinions on this episode? Peaks and Valleys. Uh, the show was peaks and valleys, but I felt like the show was more valley than it was peak. I, I, again, we came out of Tahoe, things ramped up. You had that kind of mid season climax here over the last couple episodes. And this is kind of classic Vanderpump. It's a long season. And so it kind of comes back down a lot of talking, a lot of building things back up. Um, and got a little explosive at the end, but a little more of a promo into the valleys, uh, show here coming up. But so yeah, more of a Valley episode than a peaks episode here. This week. Yeah. And listen, we're both in the content game, so I don't fault Vanderpump for trying to maybe ride last season's coattails to creating another show. Obviously sure. I, I don't blame them at all. Uh, yeah, you're right. This episode was a little of, of a Valley heavy episode. And I think it was perfectly uh, defined by your banner back there. It was, it was pumping the brakes. Uh, this was a yep. slower episode. Really, when you break it down, it was Tom having people over, Ariana having people over, you know, uh, Allie doing some uh, astrology stuff, Joe kind of doing her thing, and then, you know, uh, Katie and Ariana having it out at the beginning. So we'll start with that. Katie and Ariana pick up from where they left off. Uh, what was your feeling on that? They kind of, it was almost like they felt like two enemies that were kind of making a truce, you know, just because they recognize they have a bigger enemy at this point. That's kind of what it felt like to me. Katie and Lala? You mean when yes, they were Katie and Lala? I'm sorry. I think I said Ariana. I'm sorry. You, no, no. I'm yeah, really yeah. Jumping, you're good. Yeah, uh, I thought I missed the scene early, the but yeah. Katie um, and Lala at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, no, I thought that was a good one. And I'm super hard on Katie. Um, I think she's a little too over the top. And she owned that a little bit here with Lala. And Lala is too. We talked about that last week that Lala gets a little too hard in the paint, but speaks truths. I think they're both the same in that regard that they nothing they say is necessarily wrong. It's how they say it. And I actually thought this was a good moment for both characters showing some maturity where we haven't seen as much of that in the past. Like I'm torn with Lala because she does go crazy. She does go hard. She speaks truth, but you can tell she is trying to be softer and be more thoughtful. And that's what that scene was all about is like, Hey, look, this could get real ugly real fast between the two of us. Can we not go there? And I, so respect to both of them. Yeah, I, I really do. In a series that's made its, you know, cut its teeth on, uh, you know, drama and crazy blow ups. They had a blow up at the end of that or, or a partial blow up at the end of last episode and smoothed Disengage. out early in this one. Disengage. <laughs> Speaking of disengaging, uh, I don't think I would be going to a Sandoval pool party anytime soon. It's a little bit awkward, but. That was just what Schwartz was saying. I loved how he was speaking his mind. He literally couldn't even just leave, like, you know, without even saying anything. He just literally goes inside and he just goes, this is awkward. And he leaves. Yeah. He wasn't wrong. And it was good for him to say that, to like be like, hey, dude, I'm leaving because this feels really weird. And you shouldn't be inviting girls. That you, like, that's cool. You're trying to get out and date, but you shouldn't be bringing them into this. Hat. Like, just Tom because just, you have an allegiance to someone doesn't mean that you sacrifice your own legitimacy and what you're doing, totally. you know, in that moment, 100 percent. And this shows that he is a real friend, like real friends can call each other out and be like, dude, yeah. this is this is whack. You shouldn't be doing this. You have no self-awareness and I'm out of here. Seriously. Um, and then so we have a crazy party. I wrote and down how weird is Tom with those girls? Oh, my God. So weird with those girls. I wrote down that uh, this is literally specific with the girls. I go Tom's solution to being a dweeb is to portray himself as a creep. Oh, he's so creepy. Yeah, that was so creepy. Again, I, I had to yeah. use it. You know, I, I break up potato chips and slide them under the door. Like, did he think he was going to get like a uh, guffaw laugh from that? Yeah, those did, girls did, were, did you think they were going to be the slapping one. the water after that one. Yeah, it might be a long single hood for Tom because he's running out of people in the group, too. There's not a lot of like single. Speaking of running out of group. people, we got Anne left to pick up the pieces. Uh, what do you think of Anne have being kind of relegated to a cleaning person in this episode? She's just a servant at this point. She better get paid real well. I don't know what kind of money Sandoval makes, but uh, Ariana nailed it. She's like become his mom. And then I, the I weird have breaking meteor. news. I have breaking news regarding Anne in the present day. Anne Not. is now employed by Ariana. Ooh, twist. Yeah, twist. So so she's switched sides from Tom to Ariana. I mean, think about that upgrade in that house. She doesn't Dude. have to go to doesn't have to change the commute. Doesn't Got have to it. change yeah. anything else, but just went to the better, better team, essentially. So happy for Anne there. For uh, I loved how Sandoval just said he never left a mess. I mean, that place was a sty. My girlfriend was about to, you know, vomit. Yeah. And Ariana's booking a lot more, so she's probably getting more work and a probably better paycheck. 
Yeah, seriously. So kudos to her. Yeah. Um, do I feel bad for Schwartz? I wrote kinda. Uh, when he's on the Ducks with Joe, it just feels like he's in no man's land with Joe. Unfortunately, I feel like he wants to date her. I feel like he really likes her, but he just tells himself he shouldn't. He is in a bit of a conflict, but this is the where, where Schwartz always operates is in that like middle ground. He's always trying to please everybody and, and try to juggle the optics versus like be who he really is. Um, I can't stand Joe, but they are the perfect quirky mix for each other. And I do think he's talked about it like a few times now this season. He's like, I could marry her. Like I could be with her. And I think he knows it. I think she wants it clearly, uh, the way she was talking with Allie later in the episode. And so hundred percent that face that, oh, she went right to the, the frown yeah. when, when the friendship came. Now I want to talk to you though, because I mean, this, we, we know from experience, you know, it doesn't take much to, for these girls on Vanderpump rules to, you know, kind of you know, bully a newbie or bully, mm. you know, someone who's on the fringe. I get it. Friends with Kristen Doty is definitely a red flag. I will say for Joe, but I haven't seen anything on the show that really indicates that like she is what they're saying. Does that make sense to you? Or, or are you seeing a side of Joe from her, from her kind of reactions and everything that might indicate what they're saying is true? I'm sure she's not what any of them are saying. First of all, this is where we can't take like Katie does speak truth to stuff, but not when it comes to anything associated with her jealousy of anyone and interacting Schwartz. with Schwartz. Yep. Right. So yep. she True. is totally irrelevant in this conversation. And then a lot of the other girls are just going to follow her. So I, I think Joe's an annoying personality. I don't think she's a great fit for the show and the personalities on the show, but I'm sure she's not what she's being described to be by the other girls. So then we have a bar scene. I don't know what was leading to this bar scene. Like, I think it was just kind of like a random Friday night. Like they were out, right? You yeah. Have Sandoval and uh, Schwartz were at the bar. So Ariana shows up. Um, and the crazy thing is that Sandoval kind of just, you know, his redemption arc seems almost over at this point. Uh, AQ, you know, there were a bunch he's of lost episodes. steam. Kinda, yeah. He definitely lost steam. And in this episode, he's just like, you know, he's kind of trying to be defiant. You have James of all people, James, this season's MVP from a, from mm. a player level for sure trying to be like, just acknowledge what you did, man. Like, and he yeah. still can't do it. It's crazy. So many times this season, people have given Sandoval the answers. He hasn't liked what he's heard, but, you know, he's in such a bad situation. You'd think that, you know, he would just take the answers that they're giving him. Well, even again, he, I think he thought he had an in with Sheena. And even Sheena, right before James was like, dude, own the difficulty oh. like Schwartz is your ride or die. Like he ruined his marriage and you were part of that, doing this business and taking that away. Like, own this like talk about it say that you're part of the problem and he just cannot like the, he's incapable and he shuts down and he he's very defensive and then james is like seeing that and that's where james steps in and he just is like i'm out of here nobody gets it like and even the conversation later he has with katie like oh people say i wear a blue shirt and that's bad and it's like dude you're you are so far out on what people are trying to actually tell really you bad the problems really bad. are man it's almost a i, I feel bad a little bit because i think it's like a real mental health problem that he just can't hear those things and have that self-awareness. Yeah. The lack of self-awareness is dangerous when it comes to Sandoval for sure. Big time. Um, and then uh, he's kind of having a, a woe is me moment in the closet. He's crying. Uh, and he Scott goes, Peters. you know, and he's like, he's got beers. This guy alleged the allegedly was so <laughs> funny. Like, even if he like was trying to be as serious as possible, it was so funny because it came yeah. off like borderline defensive. It was pretty funny, but um, I mean, never say never, dude, never say never Schwartz yeah. on, on him and Ariana. Uh, I think on this one, Quinn, you could say never. It's not ever happening. Yeah, no. I mean, he, I was even shocked. She was in the same room as him at this point, just because yeah. of every, all that tension that exists. Um, so yeah, no, that's a never. Then we kind of have the down of the episode. Uh, we got Sheena's body was a wonderland. Uh, are you surprised that she name drops an A-list celebrity, but won't say who or what the circumstances were at all? I mean, we know who, right? Like that was the worst uh, trying wait, to get. Wait, who? <laughs> right? Like, uh, I mean, um, Bieber. good for her, though. I mean, he's got a he's got a pretty good record with the ladies so um good on her for having an orgy with john mayer i guess supposedly allegedly if you will okay that that yeah that that actually i mean i, I don't even doubt that for a second like there's not a mo molecule in me that questions that that happened then for sure yeah i mean if i was john mayer right like oh yeah john mayer i'm gonna like i'm gonna totally like you know get good as gold in front of an album producer Mm -hmm. oh yeah um, yeah you're a great talent obviously, obviously, come to the and he's john mayor he's also very handsome and can sing those are Super two handsome. assets aaron those are two assets 
Um, and then we're doing some astrology. So then we got kind of a, a, a cool down segment. I always call it the cool down, like right before, um, you know, the end segment with Jackson Co. there. Uh, Joe's son is living in her eighth house. Were you surprised by that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. And yeah. then obviously devastating for Joe Schwartz's friendship bomb bond is extending. So, I mean, the astrology thing, the astrology thing, it bothers me to no end. It's the same thing with the horoscopes. Like it's today weird. you're going to be motivated. Like today you're going to encounter something that was surprised, but you're going to persevere, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very much like the motivational quote stuff. Yeah. Yes. Not for me. Speaking of motivating, let's give the people what they want. Let's give the people the fuel. Uh, what were you scoring this week's episode? Vanderpump peaks and valleys. Uh, so I think I alluded to it. I think this probably is my low score uh, so far. I give it a 5.5. 5. Um, it didn't have the fireworks that we expect out of a show like this. But again, we're a little past mid season. I don't expect it to be great, but it was kind of a boring episode overall. And uh, a little bit of fire at the end here with Jack's coming back, but not that much. It didn't live up to the, the hype of Jack's coming back as much. So I give it a 5.5. 5. How about you? Folks, if, remember, if you're looking for a perfect score, get to Picasso's Pizza at picassospizza.net or any of their locations locally here in Western New York. Uh, my score, I'm right with you. I actually was going to go 5.8. You pulled me down with your 5.5, so I'm going to go 5.7. Uh, yeah, to me, this was the, like, the, the I'd say the lamest episode of the season. But, you know, uh, Aaron, I'm a, we're big wrestling guys over here at, at Trainwreck and everything. Yeah, yeah. At WrestleMania, when you have these long shows, you kind of need a cool down uh, spot. You know, you can't have 10 classic matches back to back to back to sure. back to back. The fans will get exhausted uh, after these episodes. I'm sure they're the same way when they're looking at content. You need a cool yeah. down episode here. So 5.5 uh, 5 for you, 5.7 for me. Who yeah, they didn't want to ruin the Valley, right? Like if you had a of banger course. of an episode yeah. and then the Valley. You want to set the expectations fine. too high. Yeah. Um, who do you have? Uh, I'll lead off actually. Yep. Got to do it this week, unfortunately. Uh, Sandoval back in the poo poo head of the night for me. Just too many instances with not enough self-awareness. Uh, this should be like repent, repent, repent for him would be the ultimate game plan. And he still doesn't repent, repent. He's given every opportunity. They almost established a redemption arc written into like the game code for him. And he yeah. still can't follow through on it. Poo-poo head. Yeah, big time poop head of the night for me as well. And if part of it was everyone else had a pretty good episode. I think like yeah. no one else did anything to even qualify, but he was terrible. And even in the like the apology to Katie that uh, he was told to apologize to her, he still couldn't redeem himself. And he still got defensive in that moment and got all pouty and whatever. So like even when he has these opportunities, he still makes it weird. Um, Did we not get any Lisa in this episode? No, we well. We got a little bit of, we saw Lisa talking to, it was all flashback stuff. Okay. No, yeah. No nothing, nothing Lisa. present yeah. day in the episode. So with that said, we'll get to our Vanderpump power rankings. Looks like someone can make a move here. Uh, again, folks, we rank the top five characters of each episode. Fifth gets one point. Fourth gets two points. Three gets three points. Fourth get, or second gets four points. First gets five points at the end of the season. We will have a champion. I will kick us off here. Yep. Um, so very rare. I think Lisa has been in our top five basically all season, uh, you know, for episodes or every episode scoring. Uh, obviously, she can't be in this one. So she's not on it uh, and no wisdom or anything with flashbacks. So with that said, five, I'm going to go with Brock. Uh, I love the orgy uh, drop by him. Yeah. Very casual episode where he's out with the guys at the end, too. And he's kind of the controlled guy at dinner with uh, Jack's, you know, James Co and everyone uh so kudos to brock there uh four i'm gonna go you know she hasn't been to later board much this year so i'm gonna give her credit katie maloney uh she put up with sandoval's bullshit at the at ariana's house because she knows ariana probably doesn't want her making a big scene uh, with sandoval you know she kind of wants the ignore him at all costs just like listen to whatever he has to say and move on and i think that's what the game but did she she fulfilled her number two role which we yep. talked about all season uh you know ariana's uh you know hand of the queen so mm -hmm. to speak. So kudos there uh, for three. You know, I was torn on this one to even include her in the top five, but I'll uh, I'll go ahead and give Ariana three. Uh, the spitefulness of the house party. I didn't mind it too much. Let's have a little fun with the game. Let's have people over. It was the first episode that didn't feel like she was completely like trying to get at Sandoval. It felt like she was more focusing on Ariana. So I'm going to give her credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, I will go. Uh, you know, this is tough, but I'm going to go actually. Um, Sorry, Allie uh, as my number two. She's okay. selling. She's clearly booking Joe for these uh, astrology appointments. She's getting a closing segment, and that counts for something in the Vanderpump world. Does. And then number one, 
my guy who's ordering a Red Bull uh, to start off his dinner at Tom Tom, my guy who's telling, you know, Sandoval that he's got to figure it out, James. Another big performance from James in this episode. Uh-huh. Not not a 35-point game by any means, but, you know, 25, yep. eight boards, seven assists, good solid game from uh, James here today. He's been having that kind of season, so I get it. Actually, I think this is the most different we've had in the top five. And to your point like of it. Lisa not being in it, I don't have James in my top five. And that's a first for me, I think, this season of not having James. Uh, so mine are at five. At the five spot, I got Katie. I think that's her first time making a, a, a point for me. I thought the for me, it really sold me on the scene with Lala and those two showing maturity. But then you're right, the scene with Tom and just being able to shut up and just be like, yeah, whatever, Tom, you're an idiot. Uh, good on her. And another person I don't give a lot of points to, and you've heard me dog on her here at the number four spot, I'm going Sheena. I thought Sheena trying to tell Tom to, hey, you have to take some of this accountability on this stuff and saying like, look, I want to be your friend. I'm throwing you this bone. It's him still not taking it. And uh, I think her sit down with Ariana went well, even though she's still all about Sheena and very selfish, that didn't turn into tears. That didn't turn into fireworks. It's a very mature conversation. So she gets a point for that. Uh, three, I'm going with Lala. I think her showing that she is trying to be a better person, be more mature. Um, I loved her comments when she was like, this is a weird vibe in here. Schwartz or uh, Sandoval must be here, um, but still being there for the right people. She gets a point Two, I've been really hard on Ariana as of late. I thought she had a great episode to your point there. It wasn't the vindictive Ariana. It was a more cheerful Ariana and uh, I loved her comments like feeling bad for Anne and now that makes a lot of sense now that we know the information that Anne's working for so I thought she had a good episode and the number one spot goes to the number one guy uh, the old number one guy in the group Jack's making a comeback and just going straight into the paint on Tom dude and just not even like a hey how you doing just like you messed up you're an idiot uh, Jax came out and hard. played the hits. I, I give him credit. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that he, he literally was like, I know I came in hot or whatever. I wish he'd even say that or, whatever, I know. You know, or triggered. I, he you pulled know, I it back just, a little bit. No, I you mean, can't admit. I don't like my Jax who admits he's wrong. I like my Jax who's full throttle. full. Forward. He was. It was classic Jax. And I, it, and I know that he got fired from that show, but dude, there was nothing better than the height of Vanderpump with Jax and Kristen and Stassi and like all that drama was the best. You ever watch Jersey Shore back in the day? Not as much, no. Okay. Well, there's just a famous scene where, where Ronnie was just running at this guy on a boardwalk before he knocks him out. And that was just Jax like every episode. Like every just, you episode. Never know what happen. So yeah. kudos to Jax. We'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Thanks for tuning us in the past weeks and coming weeks uh, here on Train Wreck Rules. Thank you, AQ. Thank you for listening and subscribing, everyone. Remember, it's the show that where you can listen with your husband and you can listen with your mistress. It's Trainwreck Rules. Everybody have a good night now.